this video I'm going to talk about DNA replication. Replication is making a copy of the entire DNA code. Uh, notice that the word replica is in the word, so we're just trying to make a replica or a copy of the DNA. So I really want to make sure before we get started, we're going to see that there are really two reasons why you open up the code in order to access the nitrogen-based sequence, and that's DNA replication and something else called gene expression, which I'm going to talk about more in future videos. And I just really want to make sure you keep the two of those separate because uh, a cell either does one or the other. Uh, very briefly, a cell will do replication anytime the goal is to make a copy of the entire DNA code in order to make a new cell. Uh, that's very different from gene expression. Very briefly, gene expression is going to be done whenever you just want to copy one little gene or one very small segment of DNA in order to build a protein. And, and cells will always do gene expression because they're constantly needing to build new proteins, uh, whereas DNA replication might be more of a special case uh, only when cell division is necessary. And so we're going to talk about this process in this video and gene expression in future videos. So let's go into uh, the idea. Um, I showed this picture in a previous video. I just want to remind you that maybe in, in the human body cells, there are 46 different pieces of DNA to be copied. Um, you can kind of copy all of them at the same time. All of them will kind of open up in various spots and start to copy their code on the two strands. Um, you don't need to memorize these numbers, but I just figure I would try to emphasize what an expense this is. Uh, six billion different DNA bases to ultimately be copied. Um, and so that's why it's really important to keep your cell division regulated and only to make a new cell when it's needed. So let's go through the process. Uh, the first process is going to be to access the code. Um, in order to, to do anything with the code, we have to be able to read it. So that means that proteins are going to come in and untwist the double helix, and that essentially breaks the hydrogen bonds in between the nitrogen base pairs. So that's kind of these lines right here. Um, so if they kind of break, and then that will effectively separate the two strands, and now we can read the nitrogen bases in between. And so um, the step after that is that uh, free floating nucleotides can just kind of come in and pair up with the appropriate nitrogen base. Uh, we have nitrogen bases floating around, maybe from our nutrition. We eat other organisms that have DNA codes, and we just kind of use the same letters. So um, in every place there is maybe a, a, a G exposed in the old strand, and maybe a free-floating C will just come in and pair with it. So let me do that. And then um, every place there's an exposed C, a G will just come in and pair with that. Every place there's an exposed adenine, there will be a thymine that comes in to uh, pair up. And then for every thymine, there will be adenines that come in and pair up. And hopefully you can see that if you really look at these two carefully, that they are the same. They're copies. And so we've achieved that copying by just following the base pairing rules. The other thing I want you to notice is that each copy is half old, half an old strand, and half a new strand. Okay. Um, the final step then would be, let's assume that we've got our, our copy nucleotides coming in. In the new strands, we've just got to glue them together to make a continuous strand. I remember that a nucleotide was kind of its own sugar, phosphate, and nitrogen base, but they're kind of not together yet. So maybe another protein kind of comes in and glues the sugar phosphate backbone together so that it's actually a continuous strand. When that happens, the double helix will be able to retwist and we've really got two complete copies. Uh, remember that in eukaryotic cells that those copies will be tied together like an X um, when the DNA packs up into chromosome form uh, to kind of continue the process of cell division. Okay. Um, could there be errors in copying sometimes? So I just tried to show maybe a more extended piece here, uh, and I tried to show uh, maybe a mismatch in pairing here. So sometimes that can actually happen. An, an error in copying the DNA code is called a mutation. Um, and why might this happen? I thought that, that um, T's always paired with A's. Well, they do almost all the time. Uh, maybe we estimate just one out of every 100,000 letters kind of pair up incorrectly, not a number you need to memorize. 
Um, but if there's billions of letters of code, that's enough to create quite a lot of potential errors. And so the other thing I just want you to generally be aware, aware of is that there are proofreader enzymes. Um, and those proofreader enzymes kind of come in and they know which um, side is the copy strand and they can kind of just zip along and kind of check off to make sure that the right nitrogen bases have paired up. Sometimes they can detect mutation mistakes. They can kick out the wrong letter and make sure to replace it with the correct one. And that greatly reduces the mutation rate. Um, although the mutation rate isn't zero even then. Uh, sometimes mutations slip by the proofreaders. And that's really important because I want you to appreciate that the living species uh, want this balance between continuity, um, passing on the DNA code correctly to their new cells, um, and potentially sometimes cell division leads to reproducing offspring. So it makes sense that species would want to pass on their traits reliably to offspring, but still allowing for some change. Because ultimately, um, uh, species over many generations are going to need to adapt to their changing environment, and you can't have evolution without mutation. So there's kind of this balance between promoting uh, the correct copy while, while still allowing for some change. And so uh, we've just talked about replication, the, the goal of copying all of the DNA reliably before a cell division. Um, and we talked about the basic steps. Unwind the double helix to break the hydrogen bonds. Let nucleotides pair up um, so that the nitrogen bases pair up correctly. And then just glue the sugar phosphate backbone of the new strand together.